But as I saw that instrument in the hands of Mr. Gottfried Reich in his very famous painting, and if you go to my website or go to the other YouTube, you can see the painting in its original glory in Leipzig, presented by this uh, presentation. I didn't play, uh, or I didn't cut together from uh, from that uh, YouTube. I only just wanted to present present generally what what natural trumpet we're playing was about, as opposed to piccolo trumpet or whatever, in that sh very short YouTube. This you these YouTubes are much longer because I'd like to be more expressive with it and understanding. This is also an instrument that you can change the bell on. You can not only change the bell, you can change the first lead pipe. As a matter of fact, you can also change the second lead pipe completely. And then that's basically the instrument. And I can take another one that I have over here. That was made for me, just finished last week from a very, very fine instrument maker named Christopher Cornford. He's a horn maker. Change that, put this in here like this, take that, and maybe take another bell. The only thing is that each of these bells has a different conicality and a different flare. And some play better in certain registers and some don't. And some you can are, are made in a certain flare so that you can actually put your hand inside the bell or not. Because each has its own flare, they fit together in another way. So, but the idea is to, is to be able to, to play the instrument in its proper and original way, or with its proper and what I believe its original technique. And this technique is to play half tones and reflection. The same playing that they did later in the early 19th century as classical instrument playing. Now that had to have come from someone and before, and I believe it actually came from Italy even earlier, with the, the great players that came up from Italy, Cesare Bendinelli and Girolamo Fantini, who wrote earlier treatises and, and method books about how to play the instrument. Now, if I could just try that one more time, I think the same piece, I think you will see or hear that there's quite a difference between the form of this bell and the form of this bell. You don't see it maybe so much, but this is much more conical than this bell, but I will try to do it. difficult to control than this bell. The longer, the, the wider the bell, the more easier it is for you to put your hand into it and be able to reflect the air. What I'm doing with the hand reflection is I'm shorting, shortening the, the column of air that's resonating. And I can even go into quarter notes, quarter tones. But just the first interval is very much more difficult. This is a tighter bell, so I don't have the flexibility of being able to move that B flat, the seventh overtone, a little bit higher. Try once again, just the first accord for me. Just play a G minor chord. Okay, I'm a little bit flat generally. That's the problem too. Let's see if I can come up to that. No, I'm still flat. See, the, the, so without the piano, So you can hear that there's quite a difference between what the possibilities of are to create uh, intonation and flexibility in the sound between this bell and this bell. Well, I have an even larger bell here that I actually had made in California the last time I was there um, for actually for Mr. Canstall's funeral. He had died. 
and it was more of a celebration of his, oh, well, not a celebration, but a, I think it's called a, a wake. And there was a great trumpet player there named Arturo Sandoval from um, Cuba playing. I didn't play at the, at the ceremony because I wasn't asked to play, but that's not always so important. I'm not insulted by that anyway. Um, I just have to take this apart here and put this instrument together properly. You can see that this bell, though, if you can get close enough to me, please, Mike, to take a look at that. If When I put this together, each time it's a question of making sure that the instrument is not... It doesn't fall apart, and all you have to do to make sure it doesn't vibrate or rattle you just hold a little tighter. Now I'm still flat here because, again, the conicality is bigger. So without the piano again. So you can see that the conicality of the bell is, uh, allows more or less variance in terms of the inflection and hand reflection that you can use to intonate. Of course, the tighter the bell, the easier it is to play high notes. But it's not only about playing high notes on the trumpet, please, gentlemen. It's about playing beautifully on the trumpet. It's about playing expressively on the trumpet. It's about making music on the trumpet, in a word. So I actually have three sets made by Mr. Cornford and three extra bells. I even have a, uh, the trumpet to catch a bell that I used here also because you could even play piccolo horn on this with a horn mouthpiece. And I've developed some extra mouthpiece variances that might even be interesting for the general public. This is the mouthpiece that I've been playing on the instrument. It has a 5.4 hole. 5.4. No, excuse me, 4.5 hole. But it, con it goes conversely out of, the, out of the cup. And you see it's a very sharp bite into the throat of the mouthpiece. The bite of the mouthpiece is the, the rim. I'm talking about the throat. This is a, a, a much more smaller hole. It's about a three millimeter hole. And this is about a 3.2 millimeter hole. So if I take this same instrument, just change the top part, and take perhaps this, Maybe, let's see how the intonation is. Can you play a B, B minor? Just put the pedal down. Just put the pedal. I'm still flat, so without the piano. Sorry. Sometimes it takes a little while for these things to get a little bit warmer so the temperature goes up, but... Um, basically, I built these instruments to play in A415. I'm only playing A443 so that we can demonstrate something with the piano right now. But uh, it's not really necessary. I'm more interested in ex explaining how these things can be developed. And I'm still in the developmental stage. The instrument that was, came out of the museum, the Grazia Museum, which is a copy of an instrument made from, from the Herr Pfeiffer from 1697, that was played in Leipzig at that time, was brought to me during that lecture in Leipzig and given to me out of the vitrina, right out of the glass case. And it was a copy of the instrument because the instrument itself has been lost. All of these instruments from that time have been lost, except for a couple of Steinmetz instruments that are in, in um, Berlin, 
but they have a much bigger bell and they're probably not trumpets but more the direction of horns. Corno da caccia, but soprano corno da caccia, not tromba da caccia, which are trumpet, uh, hunting, tr hunting trumpets. But to, to just uh, get the, the listener to have an opportunity of hearing the difference um, and this, the size of this. So I have a variation here. I have a much bigger bell, but a much smaller mouthpiece and a much smaller bore, and it's much more controllable. You could hear that it was much easier for me to play it. So what, night, what I'm doing right now is trying to experiment to find out how, what works best. If I try this one, let's see how that works. It's a bigger bore, and also this is about the size of a cornet shaft. It would fit into a cornet. Let me see just if I have a cornet here. Yeah, fits into a cornet wonderfully. And it sounds like this in a cornet, though, so you get an idea. So it's possible to play a cornet with this mouthpiece. And there's a big difference in the size of, this is for like the, the bore of a French horn, and it doesn't fit at all here. It's much smaller. So we're talking about different bore sizes of the shank of the mouthpiece, the bore size of the mouthpiece itself, and the back bore. So I'll try this now. No, this is a little bit too big for the size of this bell. So it's a combination of the size of the bell, the size of the bore of the, the, uh, the throat of the mouthpiece, and the cup. Um, I could even show you or play for you how it would sound if I took, instead of this, once again with that, Or if I took even a bigger mouthpiece, what I call the military mouthpiece, or, or what was often played as a principal mouthpiece in a, in a natural trumpet. That's a beautiful natural trumpet. And I'll show you that maybe later in another YouTube. This mouthpiece is in much larger. You can see there's a big difference. This is already 18.5 uh, millimeters. It's bigger than a than a Shilke 24, it's about a Shilke 26, 27 in diameter. Much bigger than a Bach 1. This mouthpiece is al almost the size of an alto trombone mouthpiece, or larger. And the sound is very much different. So it's possible also to play that on a mouthpiece that large. The question is what sound that you're looking for. This is a military mouthpiece or principal mouthpiece. Some people have been trying to play the Baroque trumpet on a mouthpiece this big, and some are very successful at it. It's possible, but the sound gets, for me, very diffuse, unless you play a very flat cup, and then it becomes too brilliant. But a military trumpet can have a much different, more intensive sound. This is a, a trumpet that was built for me by, um, you, well, actually was his father built the, the basis of it, Adolf Egger, and Reini Egger in Basel. And it's a bell changeable instrument. And it's a very special instrument because of that. Uh, this is a Renaissance bell. You can see that it has a very similar form than the instrument that, that I originally played with the for the trumpet to catch you. 